Hey guys, it's Adam from News Pixel, and today I want to share with you my experiences and my comparison between the Edelkron system and the Rhino Arc 2 system. And just to be specific here, this is the Slider Plus Pro Long 25 inch edition. And in my particular case, uh, I'm uh, my experience is with the Head Ones. I've got two Head Ones with the Tilt Kit system. Uh, as opposed to the head plus system. And I'm gonna mention later on why this is significant. Now the actual points, the actual bullet points that I have right near, uh, right here are based directly off of Gerald Undone's video uh, where he makes his own comparison and kind of gives you his final verdict in the end. Uh, and the reason being is because he's had a lot of influence on my decisions. And I wanted to use that as the template for my own review to offer some counterpoints to that. However, do not by any stretch of the imagination interpret this as a, an Adam versus Gerald video. He works exclusively in video editing and photo production and film production and stuff like that. I'm an art channel. So I'm some guy who loves gear and I'm a bit of a geek, but he's got far more expertise. I rely on him all the time and I love his channel. So don't take this as me roasting him. Not even remotely, okay? The second thing is, I'm not an Edelkron guy or a Rhino guy. Everything that I'm sharing with you is completely unsponsored and unbiased. I made this decision based on what worked best for me and what I considered a more reliable system, okay? So to jump into it, the first thing that Gerald mentioned is slider distance. When on, mounted on a table, the Rhino Arc 2 gives you around 24 inches and the Edelkron Slider Plus Pro gives you 25 inches, which is comparable. However, when mounted on a tripod, this distance effectively doubles, which is nothing to shake a stick at, right? That's a very significant difference. Now, depending on the type of production that you do, that might not really be a, necessarily, a necessary amount of real estate. But in my particular case, that actually gives me the full length of my table when I'm doing slider shots. If you're doing shots outside, you get much broader, more dramatic sweeps across. So for me, having that extra real estate is definitely an added advantage that I do use regularly. With that said, one of the things that Gerald mentions in his video is that this, is, this causes a potential risk, and it does. When at opposite extremes, when you're actually using the full length of the slider, if you don't have this mounted properly, um, then there is a risk of it tipping over. He's absolutely right about that. However, he goes on to say that you need to really brace it down and it sags a lot at both ends and he has to weigh it down with sandbags and stuff like that. And that's not actually true because when you have this mounted, the first thing you have to remember is not to mount it on a tripod head. Even if you have it mounted on the most robust video head, it will sag. And it sagged with the Rhino Arc 2 because the Rhino Arc 2 is five pounds, the actual unit, as is the head plus. So with all of that added weight, if you have it mounted on a tripod head, it will sag. So you always have to mount it on the center column itself. You can even raise the center column a little bit and still not get a significant amount of sagging. Maybe at the opposite extremes with the Cider Plus Pro, maybe around three centimeters tops. I would say less, maybe one to two centimeters, which is not significant. That doesn't really show up in your shot. The second thing is, how you mount this matters with regards to how you set it up on the tripod itself. And I actually have a video you can check out right here. You have to make sure that it's centered properly over the tripod legs. So you've got both of the legs lined up with the length of the slider, but you also do not want to set it up with your tripod at the standard width. You wanna make sure that you widen out those legs more to give you a broader, wider center of balance. So long as you do that, I use the full length of the slider all the time and it, there's zero risk of it toppling over. Now in the video, I make the distinction between the Slider Plus Pro and the Slider Plus Long. The Slider Plus Pro mounts with this center screw, and that allows you to line up the, the, line up the slider properly with the tripod. With the other one, you have to spin the entire slider and it doesn't lock evenly with the legs, which is where a problem can come in. And I find that that's a big reason why you wanna get this one instead of the other one, because it actually mounts better. The next thing he talks about is belt tension, the actual belt itself, and that the motor is very finicky. And he talks about how it's a big pain in the butt to dial it in right because it slips or it jams and you constantly have to adjust it and everything like that. Here's the thing. The Slider Plus Pro is, has an added advantage that the Rhino Arc 2 does not have. And that's the fact that you have the option to manually slide it back and forth. So you can actually manually move it back and forth when the actual motor is engaged. 
So um, that's something that you can't even do on the Rhino Arc 2. And he, he's absolutely right. If you tighten it too much, then this doesn't budge. If it's too loose, then it might not engage the teeth on the actual motor itself. So if you do want to utilize that slide, there you do have to kind of dial it in just right so that you have the right amount of tension, but the right amount of looseness. However, if you, if you don't need to do it manually, if you don't want to have to slide it manually in set keys, which is a great advantage of using the system, it's much faster. Um, you just use your remote or you use your app or whatever the case might be, and that's generally how I do it. Because just like I've got my camera set up right now, I usually have where my camera is right now, I have it actually set up on my slider and I do talking headshots. So of course I can't get up, move the slider, aim it, sit down, try it, no, go back. Instead, I just use the app or whatever and I slide it to the spot. I actually have it shooting on me. I've got a monitor over here that I can monitor myself with and line it up that way. So in that particular case, I keep it a little tighter anyways. However, actually undoing this little thing and tightening it and getting it dialed in right, that process takes about nine seconds. It's very easy. Pop off the little cap, tighten it, test it, pop it back in, job done. So it's, I don't think it's fair necessarily to make it sound like it's a really big deal to dial it in. And if it, if it needs a little bit of tweaking every now and then, it's seriously not an inconvenience. But I'll tell you what is an inconvenience. When I first got my Rhino Arc 2, uh, the first time I tried to do a faster slide, and by a faster slide, I mean around eight seconds or less, or actually 10 seconds or less, I set it up, I set, the t I set my two keyframes, and then I set the interval to around eight seconds across, and I hit play, and it gets halfway down the slider, like this, and then goes here and makes this frightening sound to it. And it goes to, and it just completely halts. I thought, the motor stripped or the, the, the belt stripped. It was a horrible sound. It sounded like the entire thing melted on me. And I went, oh my God, okay. So I turned everything off and I checked the belt tension and the motor and I made sure everything was properly attached and screwed on. And I move it back, I turn it off, I turn it back on, I recalibrate it. I try it again, I set it to eight seconds. I set it again, <clears throat> does this. And I went, oh my God. Something's seriously wrong. I went online and within five minutes of going on YouTube, there was somebody else complaining about the same problem. So I realized I'm not the only one. So what did I end up doing? I got in touch with Rhino and they addressed it beautifully. I mean, their customer service at Rhino is, is top of the line. Within, I'd say within 48 to 72 hours of contacting, telling them that I had this issue, I had a new Rhino Arc 2. So, oh no, sorry, I got a new, I got a new motor. A brand, they sent me a brand new motor. I mailed it back and they sent it back. It was incredibly fast and incredibly curious. Their customer service is just top of the line. I get the new motor, I attached the new motor. I made sure the little rubber, free rubber gasket that comes with it, I made sure that was properly installed so everything's nice and secure. I go to set up another shot, same problem. It didn't solve the problem. So I was like, okay. So I got back in, back in touch with Rhino and they said, uh, and they said, you know what? Just don't do any shots that are faster than, let's say 10 seconds. And sure enough, if, as long as I did a shot that was, wasn't was any faster than, let's say 12 seconds, I knew I was safe enough and I didn't get that issue, but it could not handle that speed. That's a design flaw. And that's an inconvenience, right? Not that you use, not that you're creating slides that are that fast normally, but the fact that it's not designed to be able to keep up with what it's designed to do, is definitely a, a major design flaw as far as that goes. And while we're on the subject of belt tension, comes the actual mounting itself, how to actually mount it to a tripod, this center screw over here. Gerald mentions the fact that it's much, it's it's a much more secure connection because on the Rhino Arc 2, you have multiple different uh, screwing options in the middle, as well as screwing options on the opposite ends, which is true. That definitely, if you really wanna make sure you got a perfectly stable shot, that's true. That definitely helps in the event that you actually don't move the slider. You keep it in one place all the time. But if you're the type of person who likes to use it in a certain place, pick it up, move it somewhere else, mount it on a tripod or move it to different places, that's a, that's a, actually walk yourself through the act of setting it up like that. 
you've got two different tripods or two different light stands. You unscrew it on one end, you have to hold it up here, unscrew it on the other end, make sure that it's properly balanced, move it over here, get that tripod, the other one, make sure that they're level, get the level, make sure that they're both... That's a very big involved process just to move it from point A to point B. And that kind of, that kind of involvement in moving it from one place to the other is a big inconvenience that, use, that consumes a lot of time. You just want to mount it on a tripod in the middle and you're good to go. And when it comes to that center screw, there's a design issue with that center screw on the Rhino Arc 2. It's kind of got this three pronged thumb screw like that, similar to this, but you actually have to reach through the top past the belts themselves. So if you just try to screw it like that, your hand keeps snagging the belts and that can pull on it and weaken or damage the belt. So you right away, you don't feel safe doing it like that. So you end up having to take two fingers and try to force it like that, trying to avoid pressing on the belt. You don't have this issue with this one. This one screws underneath like that. So it doesn't get in the way of the belt. Confided on the Rhino and the Slider Plus Pro, that bolt, that center screw does get pretty tight. So you have to have, you really have to push your fingers to be able to get it. And sometimes you have to loosen it manually with your hands just to get it turning and then it'll unlock. But I definitely prefer the system. I find it a lot easier to set up and there's less risk of damage. And again, with regards to mounting, uh, uh, Gerald mentions the fact that it comes with the, the, the Manfro 501 plate, which is fantastic if you use that system. In order to be able to benefit from using a video tripod Manfrotto uh, release plate, you have to be invested in that system globally. And I used to be. I had the, the, Man, all, the Manfrotto tripods and all that different kind of stuff. But when I switched over to the RC2 adapter, the click in, click off, thumb screw thing, it was a no-brainer. I never looked back. All I have all the X-Pro heads, all that use the RC2. I've got RC2 adapters on everything on my on my on my Ronin gimbals, on my actual sliders over here. So if I take this and I move it over here, even on my flex tilt head, I've got it up right now, I've got another one. So here, I've got my camera. Now it's mounted to my slider. Now it's mounted to here. Now it's mounted to a balanced gimbal, okay? done so this system is just my personal preference and another youtuber that that's heavily invested in the rhino system and loves the rhino system is caleb pike from dslr video shooter another youtuber I absolutely loved he's heavily invested in the in the arca swiss system and he uh, uh he had a arc an arca swiss adapter connected to his to his uh rhino slider to the plate itself i just put another rc2 adapter on mine so I didn't actually benefit from the 501 system. Am I saying it's good or bad? It's not good or bad. It's just your personal preference as far as that's concerned. You have to think about what kind of system you're connected to. That brings us to a big elephant in the room that, that I felt that Gerald kind of browsed over a little bit too casually. The, yeah, it can kind of get in the way. And he kind of dismissed it. This is the second cable. This is the actual Ethernet cable that came with my Rhino Arc 2. And this was the replacement cable. The original one get, ended up getting damaged because on multiple occasions, it got caught in the wheel. The wheels on the Rhino Arc 2 are exposed. Now, it's a really nice carbon fiber slider. It's nice and smooth, but the wheels are exposed. And the way I like to set myself up, this Ethernet cable, you really constantly have to be conscious of keeping this thing out of the way of the slider, even though it's designed to kind of try to avoid it. And because you can only pen to a certain limited distance, I would have the pen, and when that truck would hit the end of the track, if this thing's in the way, it would constantly get caught in the slider itself, causing it to <laughs> jam. And it eventually caused it to damage the ethernet cable. It limits the distance that this thing can travel. If you look at the on the Edelkron system, because you're using batteries, confided with the head plus, you can use a cable as well, but the cable doesn't get in the way, you can rotate that thing indefinitely. Nothing's gonna get tangled but you have a limited range of mobility on the Rhino Arc 2 because of this cable. My A7 III also has the, uh, the HDMI and the, and the power cord as well, which also would constantly get in the way. So I had to find some way of using ties to kind of keep it out of the way or lift it up so that as it's sliding, it's not snagging. On the Edelkron system, 
there's nothing sticking out. There's nothing that can get caught in the wire. So even if I have a cable run right over this, it just slides over the outside of it. I'm not worried about that, but I don't have cables in the way. And the actual power cable is underneath. Something that Gerald actually complained about. And I got to laugh, if I'm going to roast Gerald, I got to make fun of Gerald a little bit. He's Can he's a fellow Canadian, so we have to roast each other. But he, <laughs> he, he has to, oh, what the, I got all under, oh, the scoliosis in the arm having to reach underneath. Have you seen Gerald's arms? I'm pretty sure he can handle the weight. <laughs> the guy's got arms like, like Atlantic salmon. They're huge. So <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, but I actually have both options. If you look at mine, I have the, I actually have a DC cable that connects underneath, but I also have the NPF battery for when I'm working on a tabletop. So these connect in the side. They don't get in the way at all, as well as this. The other thing that Gerald complains about is the battery plates. They're made of plastic and you got to be careful. They actually have a little, a little sticker that you get when you first get your Elkron. Um, uh, don't over tighten the screw because it can crack the battery plate. I think, yeah, it could definitely be beneficial to have this made of metal, but I know people that have had their Edelchrone systems for, you know, for five years and they didn't break. And he also, again, in Gerald's dramatic, he was, he, although he wasn't joking, he was actually quite annoyed. Um, getting the batteries off, he's like, it strips the skin off of your hands. It's such a painful thing. I'm of course dramatizing his dramatization, but if you can see here, my hands are doing quite fine. And I've taken the batteries off about 6,000 times, so. He's being a little dramatic. It doesn't tear the skin off of your hands. <laughs> Confide it. If it does break, if his broke and he had to get replacements, I do think the cost of a replacement battery plate was a little bit on the big side. I think they should actually provide free replacements if that actually does happen. It shouldn't be that much of an expense, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. The other thing, and this is an added bonus. This is something you can just get it as an added bonus. This is the dummy battery that comes for the Sony battery that, that came that I got for my Rhino Arc 2. This is cool in the event, and it works perfectly fine, it's cool in the event that you never take your camera off of the slider. The reason being is because I'm doing slide shots and everything like that, but then my cat does something cute or I wanna go outside and do some, some stuff with my gimbal or whatever. And I just wanna grab my camera, unclip it and run upstairs with it. When you have this connected, you can't just grab it and go. You have to take it out, unplug the dummy battery, go find your batteries and clip them in. So if you wanna do something quick and on the fly, this actually slows you down. Besides, I always have my camera plugged in and char it's charging right now as we speak. So it's not an actual convenience. It actually slowed me down and I never ended up using it. So that's just something to take into account if you do decide to get the, the dummy battery. Next comes the app. And Gerald, uh, again, complained that he, he said one of the added advantages of working with the Rhino Arc is the fact that you can just work with the system. You aren't dependent on the app. And that's definitely a benefit. However, I personally have never found the app to not work. I think maybe on two occasions since I've ever had it, it didn't connect for some reason and I just had to reset the system. But it's one of the most reliable apps I've ever used. However, he, it's a fair statement because if your phone dies or if the batteries die on your phone or if you drop it in a pullback accident, you want to still be able to use your Edelkron system. It kind of sucks if you have a perfectly functional, functioning system, but because your phone doesn't work, you can't use your slider. Which is why Edelkron just solved that with the remote. You can actually check it up here. I have a review of this. Okay, this is the new Edelkron remote, which they actually released right after I repurchased this Edelkron. There you go, as far as that's concerned. You got a remote that works perfectly. I use this all the time. It's very practical. While we're on the subject of the app, I want to talk about functionality of both, because this was another deal breaker for me. When I first got my Rhino Arc 2, I, one of the things I like to do is a lot of macro shots. I'm always doing macro shots of books and different products and stuff like that. So act, like pinpoint accuracy is something that's extremely important to me. And when I was working with the Rhino Arc 2, I would set a keyframe and then I would set the second keyframe and then I would then I would prepare to do the shot and it would always go back to the starting point. And at least 65% of the time when it would go back to that starting point, it would overshoot it, undershoot it. It would no longer be at that proper spot. So if I've got it, got it, locked onto a head like this, and then I missed the shot, it ends up going over here. That's an unusable shot. And I kept having this consistent problem. So I got in touch with, with Rhino and they sent me a new Rhino Arc. They said, there's probably something wrong with the thing. So I, they sent me another Rhino Arc. So I got a new motor and a new Rhino, Rhino Arc 2. Same problem. It didn't fix the problem. On top of it, 
Um, another even bigger problem is when I do my talking heads, I have the slider going back and forth. And for some reason, it wouldn't loop. Half of the time it wouldn't loop. It would, I would set the loop, the two keys, and then I would set it to loop and it would get to the end and then it would just stop. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And this was a really big issue for me because that would ruin an entire day shoot. And I don't have a lot of supplemental time to be able to do shoots. That ruins an entire day. And a lot of people really like that feature, the, the character that giving a slide shot in my shots do. So the fact that it wasn't working was basically meaning I can't do my job, which was a big, big hindrance. The other thing is you can only do two key frames where with the Edelkron system, you can do up to six. The other thing, the limitation with the Rhino Arc 2 is the fact that you can't control the speed of the ease in or ease out. It's, you get what you get. And that brings me to another, probably the biggest issue with the Rhino system. And that's the fact that, again, something that Gerald complained about, the fact that he was annoyed about the fact that he had to do firmware updates. I consider this the reason why I stuck with Edelkron. When I was with Rhino, one of the great qualities, one of the great achievements of the company is also their Achilles heel. And don't think this is a complaint. This is my, this is my customer feedback to Rhino. They're a very small company of, I think, maybe eight to 10 people that have managed to produce a top of the line, industry competitive slider system. But because they're such a small team, when it comes to things like firmware updates and bug fixes and stuff like that, they're, they're not keeping up with it. And they made promises of firmware updates back in 2019 that still haven't been released. And now we're in June of 2020. Features like adding the ability to put more than two keyframes, it still hasn't arrived. The bug fixes hadn't arrived. And when I started getting all these issues with my slider, they kept talking about the fact that they, they were making promises of fixing these things in upcoming firmware updates that just didn't come. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting to the point that they were allowing me to extend my return period because I was waiting to get this done and I wanted to do a positive review of it. And then a firmware update came. And when that firmware update came in, it addressed that issue, but then it introduced an even more, an even worse new issue. And that was the fact that it would drain the battery and the battery wouldn't charge past 50%. And first it was 80, and then it was 70, and then 60, and then I tried to completely drain it and recharge it, and it wouldn't charge past 50%. And you gotta remember something, you don't have the option of external batteries. If the battery on the Rhino Arc 2 goes, the Rhino Arc 2 is dead. There's no more Rhino Arc 2, the battery's built into the system, that's why the thing is so heavy. So I got in touch with, with, uh, uh, with Rhino, and uh, they were incredibly empathetic about it. They offered to send me a new one, but, uh, but he said, we're working on a firmware update. We're hoping to have it in a few months. And I'm sitting there looking at my watch thinking to myself, I'm not gonna have a Rhino in a couple of months. This thing's not gonna last that long. It, the battery isn't going past 50. By then the battery's gonna be completely dead and I'm gonna have to get a replacement. And so many of my shooting days were lost. So much of my work was interrupted by the fact that I just couldn't get the system to work properly. I couldn't get keys to line up properly. I was having batteries that weren't lining up properly. The, the, I couldn't do shots that weren't causing the thing to wig out. There were so many instability issues that just weren't getting addressed and they didn't have the, the manpower to be able to, to fix because they didn't have the resources that I, it came to the point where I just had to say, I have to ask for a refund for this. I have to ask for my money back because it just was, no, I didn't trust that it was a reliable enough system. Issue, none of these issues I dealt with, with with the Edelkron system. Like I said, this isn't a Rhino versus Edelkron, but I'm just, I'm telling you like it is. My big advice, not my complaint, but my advice to Rhino is, congratulations for your incredible accomplishment to be an industry leading slider system, agreeably endorsed by these top of the line tech YouTubers. It's time to hire more staff. <laughs> Li uh, living with this reputation of being a small company who's, who, are, who have accomplished big things has been good up until this point. But when it comes to the point where you can't keep up with the demand of your customers because you can't keep up with firmware updates and you keep making promises that are starting to become empty promises, it's time to hire more staff. I'm sure once you start to fill in those, fill in those positions and get more, get more technicians working on it, you're gonna be able to pump out those firmware updates and everything's gonna start catching up. But as it stands right now, 
this is a really big issue. When I switched back over to my Edelkrone system, I got reliability, I got ease of use, I got versatility, I got more keyframes, I got better precision. All of those things came back. I knew when I would originally, when I originally started with my Edelkrone system, these were the things I missed. When I ended up returning it, I got my replacement on, it was actually on sale at, Edel, at on B&H where I ended up getting the great, Edelkrone puts on these great sales, it's worth waiting for. With the money I got back from my Rhino system, I ended up getting the Slider Plus Pro, the Motion Module, uh, the, the Tilt Kit with two head ones, and threw in a Flex Tilt Head, and a second slider with the stand one, and then ended up getting the turntable kit, okay, for roughly the same price. You are getting far more value for your money with this system. Confide it. I didn't get the head plus. So I want to throw a big caveat in here. Gerald Undone's video is based off of the Slider Plus Pro and Head Plus system. I can't speak on the Head Plus system, which is, which is significantly more expensive than the system that I've got, and it's heavier. So any of the issues he has with the expense he has is justifiable under those circumstances. However, for my system, because it's lighter, more versatile, more modular, and completely issue-free, I'm far happier and I have far more options working with this particular system, all right? But like I said, I want to send out a huge thank you to both Rhino and Edelkrone for being fantastic companies. I can't wait to check out the new products from both of these companies and to Gerald for posting his original video. He's been a huge influence on me in a very positive way. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.